السلام علیکم آئی ایم ڈاکٹر طلحہ شفیق اینڈ یو آر واچنگ پاکستان ویٹرنی ایجوکیشن ان دس لیکچر وی آر گوئنگ ٹو ڈسکس دا ورٹیبرل کالم ایز یو نو ڈیٹ ان کیٹس اینڈ ڈاگز دیر آر اپروکسیمیٹلی ففٹی ورٹیبری یو نو ڈیٹ سیون سروائیکل اور کامن ان آل میملز تھرٹین تھریسک سیون لمبر تھری فیو سیکرل ورٹیبری اینڈ سکس ٹو ٹوینٹی تھری ریڈیو گرافیکل کنسیڈریشنز بون اب نان میلیٹیز ان ورٹیبرل کالم کین بی ڈیمنسٹریٹڈ آن سمپل پلین ریڈیو گراف بٹ ایف وی ٹاک اباؤٹ دا سافٹ ایشو اب نان میلیٹیز دین یوز آف دا کنٹراسٹ میڈیم از سم ٹائمز آلسو ویری اسینشیل فار ڈیمنسٹریشن دس از کالڈ مائلو گرافی اور مائلو گرامس so uh, sometimes uh, use of contrast medium is very essential for uh, studying the soft tissues like to check the spinal cords or uh, the spinal nerves uh, so we have to use the contrast medium now if we talk about the standard views standard views are usually lateral and the ventral dorsal views uh, uh, that are uh, very common let's come towards the abnormalities abnormalities may be degenerative or traumatic or maybe developmental uh, so in this video we will uh, just consider degenerative and traumatic abnormalities in part b we will uh, discuss about the developmental abnormalities uh, degenerative uh, changes are uh, different that may be intervertebral disc displacement spondylosis then uh, spondylolisthesis dural ossification spondylitis and discospondylitis one by one with radiograph uh, we will try to understand it traumatic condition usually include uh, fractures and uh, dislocation uh, next are developmental diseases that we will discuss uh, in on some other day to understand ivdd uh, intervertebral disc displacement anatomy of uh, intervertebral disc is very essential to understand uh, vertebral disc Uh, consist of uh, two parts annulus fibrosis and the second one is nucleus pulposus here uh, annulus fibrosis uh, is a tough circular exterior of the intervertebral disc that uh, basically protect the inner soft core and uh, this inner soft core is called nucleus pulposus uh, that basically provide cushioning in this diagram uh, this one is a uh, vertebral disc and uh, if we focus on the disc there you can see that uh, this one is nucleus pulposus uh, that provides the cushioning and uh, this one is tough structure and uh, this outer tough structure is annulus fibrosus degeneration of uh, ivd intervertebral disc is common in case of dog as compared to the cats and uh, it is normal part of the aging process it may result uh, uh, in the displacement of the nucleus pulposus since uh, it causes pressure on the annulus fibrosus either directly or indirectly which then put pressure on the uh, spinal cord definitely so when uh, whenever uh, it put pressure on the spinal cord uh, there will you can see that uh, the nervous in coordination it should be always keep in mind that uh, for diagnosing a disease always correlate history clinical and neurological findings and radiographs on the later radiograph intervertebral spaces are uh, best evaluated we will talk about the normal appearance width of the space between two vertebrae or uh, you can say in intervertebral space is uh, almost equal in any region of the vertebral column accessory process on the caudal thoracic and the cranial lumbar vertebrae may be sometimes mistaken for uh, abnormal densities overlying the intervertebral foramina so in this schematic diagram you can uh, see the ruptured disc uh, which pinch the spinal cord and nerve this is another picture uh, in which you can see prolapsed intervertebral disc which put pressure on the spinal cord in the vertebral canal don't uh, no if we talk about the radiological signs uh, that include uh, 
basically the calcification of a disc or uh, more than one disc. Number two is narrowing of intervertebral space. Then demonstration of the nuclear material in the area of intervertebral foramen. And uh, this is done by the myelography. Myelography or myelogram uh, as I discussed before is a type of a contrast radiography in which a special dye is uh, injected into the spinal cord through a needle then fluoroscopy is performed to check the spinal cord uh, to check the nerve roots and to check the arachnoid spaces and uh, if there is uh, any type of abnormality it is it can be diagnosed by the myelography in this x ray there is a collapsed second lumbar intervertebral disc this is uh, t13 and uh, this one is l1 and uh, then l2 and so on so here you can uh, see intervertebral disc is collapsed uh, this is calcified disc uh, in the spinal cord between l2 and l3 so by uh, the help of these uh, radiograph uh, i hope so that uh, you have understood uh, it very well spondylosis also called spondylosis deformans the cause uh, of this is uh, unknown and uh, it's also its type of degenerative condition of the vertebra uh, in which uh, there will be newborn formation on the ventral aspect of the vertebral bodies at uh, intervertebral spaces bone spurs and the uh, bone bridges can be formed in such cases but most commonly affected site are thoracic and uh, lumbar vertebrae and uh, there will be no clinical signs as uh, you can uh, as uh, we have discussed that it is formed on the ventral aspect so uh, it uh, does not put any pressure on the spinal cord or uh, the spinal nerves that's why there will be no clinical signs uh, radiological signs uh, best demonstrated on the lateral views look at this radiograph uh, in which uh, between l2 and l3 intervertebral space is collapsed and uh, uh, here you can see uh, the sclerosis due to new bone formation on the ventral aspect so this is a clear case of the spondylosis next one is uh, spondylolisthesis also called cervical spondylopathy uh, or sometimes it is uh, also called wobbler disease or wobbler syndrome most commonly seen in uh, young Grey Danes and uh, Doberman and uh, it occurs usually between 3 to 12 months of the age. There will be a definite progressive incoordination uh, and uh, because uh, in this case there will be dorsal laxation of the cervical vertebra particularly occur at 5th, uh, 6th and 7th cervical vertebrae. So definitely when uh, there is a dorsal subluxation, uh, uh, the spinal cord will be pinched. That's why uh, you will uh, notice the clinical signs and progressive incoordination. If we talk about the radiological signs that include flex lateral uh, views of the neck will show cranial end of the affected vertebrae. So uh, we will flex the neck by placing the patient on the lateral side that will protrude cranial end of the affected, affected vertebrae dorsally into the spinal cord. So the displacement of the vertebrae may be seen on an extended view of neck. Myelography will demonstrate cord compression uh, that is associated with the flexion of the neck. Here this one is a myelograph or uh, you can say myelogram that showing compression of the cervical spinal cord. Uh, this uh, this is a wobbling disease so due to compression there will be signs of the incoordination so here you can see due to the dorsal laxation or uh, subluxation of uh, cervical vertebra there is pinching of the spinal cord and uh, due to pinching the size of the spinal cord decreases uh, as you can compare from uh, both both two on the other sides so uh, this is a clear case of the wobbler disease wobbling uh, or wobbler syndrome so due to compression there will be definite incoordination signs fourth one is dural ossification also called ossifying pachymeningitis 
in this case uh, there is formation of the boniplex in the dura mater uh, it is also very common com uh, common in the large breed dogs uh, radiographically a, a linear bone density will be seen running just above and parallel to the floor of the vertebral canal these are the cervical vertebrae in which at c3 to c5 a linear bone density is seen uh, this is the spinal dural ossification. Spondylitis or osteomyelitis of the vertebrae. It is a type of arthritis uh, that causes inflammation in the joints and uh, ligaments of the spine. Most common site uh, uh, is the cranial lumbar vertebrae. In this x ray, new spondylitis develop at L2 and L3 intervertebral space this one is a healthy joint and uh, the next at this side sclerosis is uh, very developed that show the clear sign of uh, inflammation and uh, this inflammation is, will be called spondylitis disco spondylitis is uh, spondylitis with the inflammation of the disc in such cases intervertebral space becomes narrower and uh, changes in density are noticed in the adjacent and plates and vertebral bodies this one is a later radiograph of a dog with the discospondylitis at uh, l1 to l2 l2 to l3 and l4 to l5 now come towards the traumatic condition that are uh, fracture and dislocation number one is fractures in such cases to evaluate the extent of condition studies both planes are essential compression fracture are associated with the neoplastic growth osteomyelitis uh, osteodystrophy and uh, trauma dislocation of the of a vertebrae is quite obvious radiographically sometimes luxation uh, are uh, more difficult to evaluate uh, so this is a case uh, of a traumatic fracture of the vertebral column uh, in which you can see that uh, uh, the tra traumatic uh, changes uh, of the vertebrae at, <clears throat> at this side. Dislocation of a vertebrae is quite obvious uh, radiographically. Sometimes subluxation are more difficult to evaluate. This is a Toronto occipital joint uh, that is normal. Now look at this uh, x-ray where you can dislocate a Toronto occipital joint. A Toronto occipital joint is the uh, articulation between occipital condyle of the skull uh, with the C1 that is uh, called atlas. This is all about the vertebral column. In the second part of the video, we will discuss uh, developmental abnormalities in vertebral column. I hope so that uh, all the things are uh, very clear. Uh, if you have uh, any question, you can ask in the comment box. Please uh, like the video to support this channel. And uh, you are, and if you are new on our channel, then please subscribe it. Stay blessed. Allah Hafiz.